Hey, what's up guys? Another RE3 tutorial here. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about photo engraving and just how easy photo engraving is uh, using RE3. There's no additional software needed. You don't need to really prep the photo uh, that well before you get to engraving. Uh, so we're gonna get right to it and kind of show you some of the parameters you can use to get the most out of the photo once it's in the RE3 software. Now, as always, if you're a perfectionist or if you're someone who has a keen eye for photography or some history in editing photographs, uh, it's always best to maybe touch the photograph first, especially if it's not the best quality, but if you're taking the photograph that's exposed, even if it's just with your iPhone or Android device, uh, it's really easy to get a great uh, image quality uh, as long as the image is in focus and uh, it has plenty of contrast. Um, if you're going to edit it though in a third-party software, you want to make sure that it looks good as a black and white photo and that it has good contrast and good definition of lines. Now, without further ado, let's kind of get going. We'll show you first the uh, photo we're going to use. Uh, here is a picture of the photo. This is a, just a girl down in a subway. Uh, so we're gonna have first, and this is probably the best part, you just need to take the photo and drag it right into the software. So I'm just gonna drag that original file here. And um, as you can see, it takes just a second for it to process. This is a pretty big uh, picture that I drug in. So as you can see, pretty large photo. Um, we're just gonna kind of get in position here. This is an enormous uh, picture though. I maybe should have downsized this for the video, but it's okay. Uh, so I'll downsize it right here. Now I just held down shift and option there. That allows you to uh, do that quick size adjustment there, which it does um, all your uh, parameters as well as keep the uh, shape uh, at the same time. So I'm just gonna give this a little tweak so it's square on the board and then I'm gonna actually move this all the way down to the end of the board so that we have room to do a couple examples here. Now I just have a couple pieces of wood preloaded into the machine here as you can see and I took a photo of the space. If you have questions on how to do that, there's some other videos here in the same playlist. Uh, you can check those out on how to do that. But today we're talking specifically on photo engraving on this. So I'm just gonna uh, zoom in to a hundred percent here and actually 150% just so we can kind of see what's going on. So I'll give you one more so that we can just get a little closer. Now, uh, when you're doing a photo engraving, uh, the first thing we need to do is look over here on the right hand side to the raster properties. You'll notice that when you uh, drag and drop a photo in, you only get one layer and that is a bitmap layer indicated by this uh, little symbol right here next to the uh, name of the uh, file. Uh, and then over here, you wanna make sure that you have the halftone dither option uh, selected. Now, you could do a photo with threshold. There are plenty of uh, you know reasons why you'd wanna do that. You just have to adjust the black and white threshold to kind of get the look you're going for. This photo, not the best purpose for you. You'd probably have to do something close to this to get anything recognizable out of it. But uh, using halftone dither, the software automatically applies uh, different settings for the amount of darkness on the page. So essentially, you're applying 100% of the raster power to areas that are dark, and then you're applying uh, essentially zero uh, raster power to areas that are white. And then any place in the grayscale in between will have various power uh, depending on that. So uh, first thing you wanna look at here is your resolution. They can do photographs at any resolution. When you're doing photographs on granite and other hard surfaces or any type of uh, uh, anodized aluminum, it's really best to keep the resolution at 200 now, as a reference, most photographs are about 300 uh, DPI for resolution. So 250 DPI resolution photo uh, still looks pretty good engraving, but just when you have coarse things like uh, rock, or granite, or anodized items, it's really the only way to get a uh, photo uh, engraving to look really good is by using 250 DPI. Now, there are rules of thumb, uh, I guess, exceptions to that rule, of course. And if you have your best ways and practices, by all means do that. Uh, but for this purpose here, we're gonna set the resolution to 500 DPI. Uh, 500 DPI is a great resolution for a photo engraving, especially in the application we're using today, which is on wood. Uh, this is rather soft wood, so we'll be able to keep the uh, settings nice and low and hopefully get a really high uh, level of definition. Now, we'll kind of show you uh, at the end of the video, a few of these examples after they are engraved, so you can kind of see the difference of uh, what these different parameters uh, did to the photo. So this first photo uh, we're going to do here, we're going to kind of just run it as is. So as the, um, I guess, as the software uh, sees it to work best, and then we'll kind of show you how you can dial that in using blur, edge, and intensity down here. But the next thing we want to talk about is power and speed. Uh, these two things are really how you define the look of your photo. Now, every material will have a different power and speed setting, uh, power and speed setting that's just right for your photograph. So you'll need to dial this in a bit. But for uh, instances today, uh, we're going to slow the speed down to 45. Now, some people ask, you know, why not just run it at 100 speed? 
You absolutely can, uh, and it'll look great. But I've noticed that when you slow the laser down and it doesn't have to work so hard so fast, you actually get a much accurate, uh, much more accurate uh, photograph. So we're gonna slow it down to 45. Then I'm actually, oh, sorry, the power, uh, we're gonna slow, uh, go down to uh, 36, excuse me, and then the uh, power uh, speed, we're gonna go to 45. Now, just so we're clear, because I think I said that three different ways, uh, power 36, speed 45. Uh, in this particular photo, you could actually probably take the power down to maybe, uh, actually we'll take it down to 27 just in case, because it is a very soft wood. So we'll go uh, power 27, speed 45, again, just on a soft wood. This is a pretty good setting for uh, balsa wood uh, up to birch wood. Uh, when you start to get into uh, heavier and harder things like cedar and oak, um, settings change a bit, and actually it's a little bit harder to get uh, the same type of look out of harder woods uh, with photo engraving, especially if you're gonna do a little depth with it. All right, so now to, I guess, the, uh, the thing everyone came here for is like, what do these three settings here do? Blur, edge, and intensity. Well, first thing, blur, it's actually uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, as you increase the blur, the amount of uh, definition uh, in the photo uh, goes away uh, just a little bit. Now, the blur is good because it uh, allows the computer to kind of like, I don't say um, massage over, but really hard lines that would stand out and maybe look a little odd, it kind of uh, dampers those down a little bit. So there's a preset blur of seven. Now you can take that blur down to zero and uh, move it all the way up to 30. But we're gonna keep it at seven for this first one. Uh, now the second one is edge. Now you can see, even if I just move the edge up to about halfway to 12 and then move it all the way up to 26, I think the tap here is uh, 30 again, but as you can see, it takes a lot of the definition out of the blurriness of it and really just focuses on uh, the things that are in focus. Um, but as you move the edge back down, you'll notice you get much more of the, uh, the detail in the background and stuff like that. Now intensity is the third setting here. And this uh, also could be called brightness um, or illumination uh, in, depending on what type of uh, software you use. But simply by putting illumination or excuse me, by intensity up, you're just adding light to it. So you're just bringing more light to it than as you put intensity down, you're just darkening the photo up. Now, this isn't an exact representation of what your engraving will look like at all. Um, we just do this uh, low resolution rendering so that the file renders fast and your workflow is as fast as possible. So what we'll do here at the end of the video is just kind of show you um, a couple examples of this photo with some of these um, settings you know, changed and altered a little bit so you can kind of see uh, the different effects. Now, uh, for different effects of how power uh, and speed affect your raster, we have a couple different videos on that as well. So go ahead and check out our YouTube page uh, for more on that. But again, uh, to do photo engraving using uh, Retin Engrave version 3.0, it's really, really easy. You just drag and drop the photo in, uh, no editing really needed. Uh, you can fine tune it here by using uh, these settings uh, if needed, uh, but again, not, uh, not needed at all. So we'll go ahead and run this job off as well as a couple more with these settings change, and we'll show you uh, here at the end of the video uh, exactly what those look like. So this is the photo that we engraved. And as you can see, um, the first setting here where we had um, your blur up a bit, you can kind of see the effect uh, that that had. Uh, then on the second one where we uh, affected the intensity, oh, excuse me, not the intensity, but the, uh, the edge, uh, that is kind of what you're seeing here. And then on this third one to the right is where we uh, adjusted the intensity a bit. In this case, we just increased the intensity a little bit to brighten up some of the uh, darker edges. Uh, but again, a well taken photograph that has good lighting and you know subjects that are in focus is the key to good engravings. If you're trying to info, uh, engrave a photograph that was taken in the 70s by a Polaroid that you've scanned in or taken a picture of, it could get a little difficult, a little messy, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, most cell phones on the market today take uh, photographs of such a high quality that they're easily engravable. A little secret for those using uh, advanced Android devices, and if you have an iPhone, portrait mode is a great mode for using um, uh, photographs uh, for laser engraving. So again, that was uh, laser engraving uh, photographs using RE3. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about this, go ahead and leave it down in the comments and we'll be sure to get those answered. Uh, until the next video, we'll see you next time.